Good morning, believers. Good morning, Israel. It's your brother, J.D. Nijah. Word of truth with J.D. Nijah. Oh, boy, oh, boy. So, um, man, I didn't realize how far this is going to be a, I think I'm going to call it, holy crap. Holy crap. Before I get started, all praises to the Heavenly Father, His only begotten Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christos, Yahawashai, Solomon. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the first and the last. He's the He's the Word of Truth. He's He's our big brother. Uh, left us the comforter of the Holy Spirit so that we would um, be able to correct ourselves. So uh, this is this is time for J.D. Nyjah to uh, uh, make some readjustments to my teaching. You know, um, and I'm not using this as an excuse, but I'm seeing what what happened by um, by listening to these camps. What happened is instead of instead of staying on point with the Bible. What happened to my glasses? Ugh. Oh. No. Slack here. Oh. Not prepared, I guess. I can't wear these. Anyhow, um, I don't give up easily. Found them. <laughs> Thank God I don't give up easily. So, um, what I've got to do today is apologize for um, being too easy on these devils. You know, um, Let me turn this down. Um, you know, for a while there, I was saying, um, I was misinterpreting the, the seed lines. And, um, you know, to a certain extent, I can understand what I was doing. I was, I was trying to, make the point that even Cain and and uh, Judas Iscariot and some of these wicked people of the Bible and, and when you think of those two you don't have to necessarily put them into the same seed line because you know Jesus did pick Judas Iscariot and he did he did have him betray him for the kingdom, for for the prophecy. But um, there's, I, I've been listening to uh, some of you might know Stephen Darby, and so what, what came up is um, I was listening to um, a guy named JT, <clears throat> very easy channel to find. Capital J, capital T. He's a Negro dude. Um, Christian. Christian Hebrew. He's a lot like a lot of us that um, 
understand the Christianity side, the New Covenant side, and the Old Covenant side of this Bible. We're um, <clears throat> multifaceted believers because we're Israel, but we we understand a little bit about the Gentiles. And so um, JT was talking about Stephen Darby, and I li I was listening to Stephen Darby a lot a few years ago, and I was really he man that dude. So, um, JT turned me on to a channel. <clears throat> it's on Bishop. Uh, sorry, people. Uh, I'll put it in the description box. But anyway, um, this guy does similar thing that uh that Stephen Darby did this bishop I want to say Frank but that's not it um he talks about these how the wicked side how the how these tears operate and you know what what's happened with um with GMS and and listening to these these stupid corner boys i'm starting to see what their what they what their goal is is to distract true believers from seeing the things that people like stephen darby and this bishop whatever his name is they're and that's where i've been going off too it's like so busy worrying about stupid shit like these guys saying joseph's the father of jesus and the gentiles can't make it and who, who the Gentiles are the white man and that it's it's all distraction these guys are some kind of demonic distraction because they've actually pushed me into the place where I was I was defending some of this evil just because I didn't want to just because I I figured they they have to be wrong and so they're they're saying some things that are true but some things that are false and really muddy in the waters for um for what we need to believe in in these last days and what why I say holy crap is listening to Stephen Darby he doesn't he doesn't mince words he's he's saying we're in we're in for some dark shit and that's that's the part I think that my spirit has been um fighting is that I know I know it's worse worse than it seems and I'm not giving the message that man these are these are some dark times and we have to really stand against um, the way these people, we can see them pushing it. But if, but if you're not standing up against it, you can't say Hollywood is doing evil. Um, these elite families, they're, they're destroying the dollar. They're trying to get us to take this, this mark. They're trying. That's why we don't mark our bodies because that's part of the whole story. You don't let someone brand you. Um, what else was he saying? There was something that I wanted to bring up um, that was, it just really turned my, turned my head. Um, oh, the wheat and the tares. He was, and he, and he brought that up again. And he's like, you know, the serpent seed, the serpent seed, the seed of, is it Cain? Yeah, probably. He was the first murderer. He's he has no love for his brother. He doesn't understand the sacrifice. So I was I was actually sticking up for the seed line of Cain and now that I look back I'm like what the hell was wrong with me? So I'm sorry brothers um and the fallen angel thing. I mean, we can uh, we can assume that we were sent for a reason because we're different. We're a little bit different than these Christians. And, you know, I, I, I assume that we weren't so much fallen. And the Bible kind of says that we were more or less sent. We were sent down because of, um, because of our rebelliousness. And now we're making up for it in the regeneration, you know, and, and, 
it kind of fits my story because as Adonijah, I was wicked. And I understand that dark side. And um, I think that's what Israel, that's what Israel has that, that we understand the light from the, from standing in a, in a dark rebellious place. And these other Gentiles, they, they understand the light. Um, they understand the darkness because they're 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 in they they're standing looking at our light, so they feel dark. So it's a weird it's a weird perspective from an Israelite looking at a at a Gentile and a Gentile looking at an Israelite. So Stephen Darby breaks that down. He was talking about the tares and the wheat, and he was saying how they planted the the seed, and in the in the night, the evil one came and. Um, scattered weeds within the within the wheat, right? And so when the wheat came up and the tares came up, the, the weeds were mixed in with the wheat and um, the angels or whoever it was that was supposed to separate the wheat from the tares, I think it was the angels. I would go there, but I'm, I'm just trying to make the point. We'll open to the Bible in a minute here. Um, and the Lord told him, no, don't don't try and get the wheat out of the tares because when they're small like that, you can't tell the difference between the wheat and the tares. They look so much the same. So what he was saying and what it's giving me goosebumps right now is that, and we're seeing this happen. That's why it's so interesting. He was, Stephen Darby was assassinated from what this bishop was saying and from what JT was saying. They actually killed him because he was hitting on the stuff that we're not hitting on. He was actually preaching the stuff that, that GMS just skirts around the corners on and, 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 and points to the, to the wrong places and, and doesn't have it fleshed out. They make it so simplistic that white man's the devil. Uh, the seed line of Judah is the only one that's going to make it. Uh, Israel's the only way to go and blah, blah, blah. And they, they, they keep, they keep on that same thread and there's not any deeper understanding because if, you, if you're not black, you're not um, in a camp, you're not this, you're not that, you don't believe in the seed line goes through Joseph. If you don't believe these things, you're not going to be saved anyway. You don't get it. You don't have spirit. Fucking what a distraction because all it's doing is is leading people down a very narrow path it's a narrow path but it's going the wrong direction so what um the point Stephen darby was saying about the wheats and the tares you got to wait till they're fully grown because that's when you can tell the difference between the wheat and the tear and that's what we see going on right now is we can we feel the difference we can see the difference Uh, let's see if my camera's working. It is. Holy crap. The signs of the prophecies are coming down. And, you know, one thing I'll say about GMS, some of these guys are really good at looking into um, what's going on with, you know, this transgender, this transhumanism, this, um, the money thing. And, and if they weren't so off on their doctrine, it'd be good to listen, but they're, they're missing the point that, um, if you can believe in Jesus and you believe that he's going to save you, that's where, that's where our salvation is. When it comes down to it, I was saying this a couple days ago. The, the men from the boys, it's it's gonna I mean we should be we should be girding ourselves up to get ready for some insane times because like I listened to another uh, gentleman from England. It's a message messages for our time. 
and um, he was talking about this COP 27 or 29, whatever it is, this, what do they call it? It's that uh, climate change conference in Egypt, and they're, they're coming out with these Ten Commandments of, of how they're going to put a stranglehold on us through energy, um, energy lack. They're going to pull, they're going to pull the energy away from us and make us beg, beg to be warm, beg to be, we're going to have to do what they say to eat. We're going to have to do, so that's how they're going to get us to take that mark. But, um, and he was saying there, <laughs> this is interesting too. I like the analogy. He was talking about his car is a five speed and it's an old five speed. So it takes a while to get up to speed for that fifth gear to kick in. But we're in a, we're in a Maserati with five gears and we're going to be going zero to 60 real fast. So like the Bible says, these last days, time is going to speed up. And these devils don't have a whole lot of time so that they're going to come down with great wrath on us. And so what what um, Stuart was saying from a Messages for Our Time is that all they have to do is get it into third gear quick and have one major event happen. <laughs> And they already know what that event's going to be. And um, <clears throat> so that I'm just, I'm summarizing all the things that, that the Lord finally brought to me and said, all right, J.D. Nyjah, it's time to, it's time to leave these, these dummies, these black Hebrew Israelites, these, these camps alone, because all they did, do you see what they did to you now? They got you totally off your square. You're talking about all kinds of stuff that, I mean, some of it matters, some of it doesn't, but um, wasted a lot of time fighting with these guys. So what Stuart was saying is that one event that they're gonna they're gonna pull off, and it's gonna they already know what it is, and they know already have their timing down because they're they're gonna wait till that perfect time where the money's gonna crash. That they're going to probably do an EMP or something like that where the energy goes down and they're going to set off a a chaos so that if they if they start it they're starting in, in Ukraine with this war and they're starting because everyone knows the dollar's going to fold all the world leaders know that this is in the plans that's what COVID-19 was all about. This is the beginning of the end. We have, this is the, this is the point to see who's with us, who's against us, um, how we're going to, you know, it, it was the, it was the marker point. What was that? March 15th or March 20th, 2020. 3-20-2020 or 3-15-2020 um, so being they, they they are on their timetable now they are set to move they are set to groove um, the plan is the plan is set so they they start this war in Ukraine. They're moving all their puzzle pieces around. And the, the holy crap is coming. Holy crap. We think we're being tested now in the spirit. Wait till we start getting tested in the flesh. Like serious testing. And... Stephen Darby, man, I can see why they, why they, why they put him down because I went back and listened to a couple of his messages. He was so good at standing in the power 
of the book. He stands there and says, nope, nope, these people are wicked. Nope, they're the devil. These people are the devil. They've been the devil. They have their time. They're coming against us. Um, don't be fooled. Don't be deceived. Don't let them take your crown. Um, we should be getting, we should be gearing up. He was saying this in 2016, 2015, 2017. I'm listening to his messages five, six years later, and he's more on point. I'm surprised they don't take his videos down. I don't, I mean, he, he's already said most everything he needed to say, but I guess they were, they were afraid he was going to even stir, stir stuff up more or something. Um, but he's, he makes, he makes GMS. He makes me, he makes a lot of the men that are out here trying to do this work. He makes us look silly. He makes us look silly. He makes us look really dumb. And when Apostle Gabar said, called me a retard, now I know what he means. I am so far behind. And I'm so ashamed that I'm not. I'm not up to speed. I mean, I have the spirit and I have the right, but I've been thrown off my mark by the, by GMS and they, they really did a number on my, um, on my heart because they, they're, they were gaslighting me so much with staying on their square on stuff that is obvious and I tend to like to argue and I tend to like to prove my point. I, I want to be right. Word of truth. I know. I, I got the truth. Fuck, man. It's not whether you got the truth or not. It's whether you can stand on it and just laugh laugh at the, at the lies. And that's where I feel really stupid is I let them, I let them sucker me into, to, into a left hook, man. They've just about knocked me out. Oh, shit. Here comes the fucking brigade. This guy has a red and white and blue board. And this guy, fucking A. Whatever, people. It's hilarious. I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna finish this message and go somewhere else, but, um. Damn. The prophecies are, are popping off like, like GMS says, and. Inheritance of a blessing. I opened to First Peter three eight. It says, um, "Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion for one another, love as brethren." That's the message I went into yesterday. So, that's the one thing that I have. My messages follow. I just need to stay. I just need to stay in my lane, man, and stop. And when I hear that, I, I can't listen to these other guys anymore. On um, loving compassion for one another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil. And that's what I was doing. Fucking, the Lord is just cracking me right now. Or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing, knowing that ye are there unto called that ye should inherit a blessing. Um... Are we more worried about the curses or are we more worried about being blessed? And that, you know, yeah, the the true Israelites, yeah, we've been put through it. I mean, I don't, I, I don't understand the whole, um, how, a, how a Negro would feel because I don't have that color skin right now. But I think in one of my past lives, I've, I've been a, I've been a dark skinned man. And um, that's what's interesting in, in coming down to these last days is there's people like me that are supposed to be an example of the, the skin doesn't matter. It's There's something else going on because I'm treated the same way. I'm treated the same way. 
I'm I'm under the curses. I've had a hell of a, a life this go around. And a lot of that was believing that people were different than they are. So for me to say, oh, the seed line of Cain, they, they're just misunderstood and some of them are going to repent. And I don't know. All I know is there's a serpent ass seed out there. And what Stephen Darby was saying is they're full of snakes. Their bloodline is the bloodline of, of evil and of wickedness. And I, and I, and I messed that up. I see it. I see it in the woman I, I, I've been dealing with. There's something wrong with her. No matter how many times you pray over her, you... Uh, here they come. They're going to surround me. Just amazing. I'm going to... Uh, I don't know. They're surrounding me. I guess it's because it's a beautiful day. I'm parked wrong and everything, so the sun doesn't get in my eyes. But anyway, I'm I'm I feel really bad because I've let these serpents. I've let. I'm the guy that gives these guys space to operate in that. I feel awful about that. I'm the guy that gives these serpents room to operate and they, instead of standing against them and, and getting away from them, I always think that I can love them into the kingdom. Let me see what I got. I'll be back.